Well, I think that we've got some folks coming on up, but let's go ahead and we'll sing the song about rejoicing in the day, okay? This is the day, is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Wonderful. It's so nice to hear y'all singing about rejoicing in this day. And it's an extra good day to rejoice because we got sunshine, we got a cool breeze, but we can rejoice all the time. And I have my phone here because we're going to do Give Me Oil in My Lamp. Okay, y'all ready? Okay, we're gonna have to work on this. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh. All right, oh. we are ready. Hold on. Of course, I just asked y'all that. Here we go. Ready? Here we go. September. It's not Christmas. But do you remember last Sunday, Miss Lori told you about the first window? Do you remember what that first window was? The Annunciation, yes. And what was announced to Mary and Joseph last week? The birth of Jesus. Mary and Joseph were going to be the earthly parents of Jesus. Well, today we're going to talk about the birth of Jesus. I've got a question. How many of you think back to maybe last year, before Christmas, there's a, a show that comes on TV several times a year around Christmas called A Charlie Brown Christmas. Y'all ever seen it? Yeah, I think everybody has because it's been out for over 50 years. <clears throat> and just a little bit of a reminder, poor old Charlie Brown, he's the kind of guy who just can't get anything right. His friends call him Blockhead. They laugh at him. When he's playing football, Lucy puts, picks the football up and he falls flat on his back. When he's playing baseball, which he loves, he throws the ball, the batter hits the ball, it comes back and knocks his socks and shoes off. Well, it's Christmas, and Charlie Brown is having a problem. He doesn't understand what Christmas is all about. He doesn't get any Christmas cards, the mailbox is empty, Snoopy, his dog, is all caught up in the commercialism and the decorations that go along with Christmas. So his friends give him a job to do. They say, will you be the director of our Christmas play? Oh man, that's great, that's great. Well, the kids, they don't pay any attention to him. So they give him another job. They tell him to go find a Christmas tree. And so he goes to the Christmas tree lot with his friend Linus, and they look around, and the only instructions he had been given was to get a nice Christmas tree. Well, 
What kind of Christmas tree does Charlie Brown find to come home with? Y'all remember? Was it a great big tree? What kind of tree was it? It was a little old bitty tree, had maybe two or three branches on it. The needles were falling off. He brings it back and they laugh at him again and they make fun of him. And he sits there on the stage and he looks at his friend Linus and he says, Linus, I just don't get it. I don't understand what Christmas is all about. And so Linus looks at him and he says, I'll tell you what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. And this is what Linus tells Charlie Brown. Of the uh, of the lesson today okay we call this the nativity window now that's a, a word that you may or may not have ever heard you hear it a lot around Christmas time does anybody know what the word nativity means any idea well the fact that you hear it around Christmas time and we often hear about a nativity scene. We have a nativity uh, scene that we put up every year in front of the church. Uh, over here at uh, Independence every year, they have a living nativity. So what do you think nativity means? Y'all are just shy, I know you know. 
What does nativity mean? What are we celebrating? The birth of Jesus, and that's what nativity <coughs> means. This is called the nativity window. It's the second window on the south side of the church, right next to the Annunciation window. I want you to look at the picture of the window on the cover of your lesson. What do you see? Tell me what you see. A star. You see a star. That's right, Nat. You see a star right at the very top. Very good. And what is that star shining down on? The manger. The manger. And who's in the manger? The baby Jesus is. Let's talk about this for a moment. Do you remember that last week Miss Lori told you that way, way back, long before Jesus was born, God made a promise to Abraham that he would send a Savior and that Abraham would be the father of many, many people, a great nation. And this Savior would come to save the people of that nation. These people were the Jewish nation. Okay, the star up here though, what, what role did the star have in the nativity story? Do you know? It led who? The shepherds? Who else did it lead? The wise men. And I want to talk to you for a moment about the wise men. The wise men were not Jewish. They were not descendants of Abraham. But yet, God led the wise men by the star to come and worship Jesus. Because Jesus wasn't just born for the Jewish people. He was born for everyone. That includes you and me. Now, I want you to look under the manger what do you see there? A cross, yes. And what else do you see besides that cross? What is on that cross? A crown. Why would we have a cross underneath the manger? Any idea? I mean, this is a happy time, isn't it? And the cross... That's kind of a, a sad reminder of what was going to happen to Jesus later on in his life. Why was Jesus born? Was he born just to be another man to have fun and go around and do his own thing, be, become a carpenter like his fa earthly father was? Why was Jesus born? He was going to suffer and die for our sins, wasn't he? So what does that crown mean then? Why is that crown on top of the cross? Any idea? Are we ever going to be wearing a crown? No. Pastor Mark this morning, he was talking about when we go to heaven and we hear a ser the service is led by Pastor Christ. Will we be wearing <coughs> crowns then? I think we will be. In fact, we're going to have a whole window later on on what is called the crown of life. It's the crown that Jesus earned for us so that when we die, we will be in that congregation in heaven listening to Pastor Christ tell us how much He loved us, that He suffered and died for us. But first, He had to be born. He had to be born of earthly parents. And that's what the nativity story is, and you're going to be hearing a lot more about it in a few more months as Christmas approaches. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear Lord, although Christmas is several months away, help us to remember, not just in December, but throughout the entire year, the purpose of you coming to earth as a child to live suffer, die, and most importantly, to rise again for the forgiveness of our sins. In your name we pray. Amen. And I
And I think Miss Amy has a little bit of a song to go yes. along with our lesson today. Well, since we were talking about Christmas, I thought we would close with the song Away in a Manger. Everybody, please stand up. <clears throat> Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. The stars in the sky looked down where he on the Once more, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Y'all have a very good week. <laughs>